So today we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm basically going to play med school consultant um, on different sites like reddit.com, student forum, as well as Quora, and basically answer the most common questions that I see there. And hopefully if you have any of these questions for one another answers, you can benefit. So um, let's get into it. All right, guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you people just like you succeed on their medical journey with less stress. If you're new to this channel um, or the platform, my name is Lux. I'm an internal medicine resident, helping people succeed on their medical journey with less stress. That's been my goal for the last few years. So if you enjoy that concept, that motivation, um, and our message, then go ahead and consider liking and subscribing if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening to it on a podcast, consider subscribing as well. Um, but today, as I mentioned, we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to pop up on my computer screen some of the more popular sites to ask questions uh, regarding medical school or just anything in general. And then hopefully I can answer them and you guys can benefit. Let me know what you think. So we are going to start with Quora.com because people ask questions all the time there. The first question I see from Jacob is how do doctors remember what they learned from medical school? Fun fact, sometimes we don't really remember as much as you think we do. Um, a lot of it, and I made a video about this earlier, of kind of how I review things, we realize that we forget some of the most common things, things like how to manage a heart attack, how to manage people that aren't breathing well. Um, especially a lot of the training that we get in medical school is very test driven. So at past exams, like step one, step two, as well as our shelf exams, but then we're removed from that patient care. You know, you may be tested on things for surgery rotation or ob gyn rotation, but then you may not do that ever again um, if you don't choose to go into that specialty. So really the only way that we learn and remember things is by having some form of review. Um, I like to use uh, flashcards um, in some form or doing these apps that quiz me on cases um, or listening to podcasts um, about like case presentations. So that's kind of how I remember things, Jacob. But um, that's, you know, there's, there's no real right way or wrong way. The, the fun fact is we just don't really remember as much as you think we do. Um, the actual memory comes from just actually taking care of patients with high blood pressure or delivering a new baby and kind of knowing everything that goes around it. So if you ask me about ob related questions, I would absolutely have no idea. Um, and that's simply just because I've been so far removed from it. I take care of adults uh, and not babies. So Anne asks, can you give me any tips for studying in medical school? Yeah, we can break it down into a few steps. So the first thing I will tell you to do is to really identify what you're currently doing. Um, if you already have a system and then you know spend a day or two really tracking it without wanting to change anything sometimes we always want to ask what can i do differently but the first thing to identify is what you're doing um, and that includes tracking your techniques tracking the time you're spending and then the last thing is tracking how in retrospect you feel that, that technique was you know if you were doing flashcards as your method and you're spending two hours how much of that two hours did you feel was actually effective um, and if you find after that review, and I like to write it down or create an Excel sheet or something where I can document numbers, but if you feel like that was pretty ineffective, um, that's a good indication that maybe that technique needs to completely go away um, or you need to improve that. Because then the next question becomes, well, I like doing flashcards, I get some retention out of it, uh, but I need to learn how to do them faster. Then you can go ahead and step number two is ask yourself, how can you tinker with your system? Look through online, um, resources, people who make YouTube channels for fun, um, and ask yourself, you know, what type of things are they doing regarding flashcards? And obviously you can replace this with whatever technique you want. And then step three is to incorporate that one or two change and make a small adjustment in your study technique instead of trying to do something completely different. Um, so that is kind of my approach of kind of how to identify a study method. Now tips for studying, um, I would definitely recommend doing things that are active, more long-term retention based, almost 80% of the time. A lot of the times we have to do some form of passive learning where we're reading the textbook or listening to lecture, but even those you can make a little bit more active. But when you're reviewing, try not to be the person who's reviewing the syllabus and spending an hour reading. Um, have some form of active learning in that process, whether that's going through a few pages and asking yourself, okay, what did I learn? Can I review that in like a sentence or two? Can I review this paragraph in a sentence or two? Making it active, that way it's easier to review in the future as well as kind of remember when it comes to your test time. So those are just a few things that I will tell you. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoy those tips. Uh, ben asks, why is medical school notoriously arduous? So I can't remember what arduous stands for or what it means. Let's see. Something that's like hard, involving, or requiring strenuous, difficult. Okay, I wasn't that far off. Um, my vocabulary is absolutely terrible, by the way. Uh, why is it arduous? So I think I've made a video on this in the past. It's actually one of the more popular ones on the channel, which is 
why is med school hard or is it really hard? And my answer is like, not really. Um, not everyone agrees with me. I get some flack in the comment section down below, but basically I think medical school is more of a test of your consistency when you have a large amount of volume. So that's problem number one is that just a lot of information. And number two is that there's a consistent large amount of information. It's not like you have one class or one test of a semester that's really busy and then things get a little bit easier or you have a busy semester and the other semesters of college get a little bit busier. No, it's like every class and every kind of block um, topic organ system is going to hit you hard. Um, so you have a lot of consistency um, of large amounts of volume. The material itself is not necessarily more difficult than college material. You know, sometimes it's more advanced, um, but that's true for any topic. You know, when you think about your first classes that you learned as a freshman in college compared to what you were learning at the very end of your senior year, you know, would you consider now that material to be really difficult? No, maybe it's just more advanced and more specific. Um, so there are going to be topics that's going to require more of your time to understand um, and just going to retire and also going to require a little bit more practice, but that's, that's just part of learning. Um, but I think the majority of what makes medical school arduous, learn a new vocabulary, thanks Ben, um, is that the fact that you have to be consistent every single day and if you get behind then you have more of information to consume. And so it's like the pancake theory that I talk about in the other video, which is imagine somebody gives you, you know, a stack of pancakes to eat. Uh, and you're able to do it day one, day two, but day three, you know, you choose not to eat it because you just don't want to, you're not interested, don't want pancakes anymore. But day four, you're having to eat that stack of pancakes as well as a day before that you missed. And it starts to add up and when you have like five stacks of pancakes or two and a half um, over the time, it just becomes difficult to consume and that's where the burnout comes in. Um, so if you can be consistent, if you can have a system that can make you efficient, it's like some of the questions that we talked about earlier, um, it's not too bad. I mean, it's still going to be challenging because the material is going to require so much consistency over the span of four years. Um, but that's really my two cents. You know, comment down below if you agree or disagree. So the next question I see from Joel is, why should I go to medical school? Now, if you're asking me that question, then I don't know if the field is necessarily for you. I feel like, you know, the the idea of going into medicine is something that you should have an interest in. Maybe it's not necessarily becoming a physician. And the next question is why do I want to become a doctor versus a nurse versus a physical therapist versus a physician assistant uh, versus a healthcare administrator. Those are all areas in healthcare. Uh, but if you're asking why should I go to med school um, or should I go to med school for the money or you know the prestige or the respect, absolutely not. So uh, that's my two cents. If you're having to ask that question, I don't think I can really answer that for you. It's kind of like why should I go to business school um, or I should become a lawyer. I don't, I don't want my lawyer to be asking why they should be going to the school that trains them to become a lawyer. You, you get the point. Um, so um, obviously you may be in a situation, Joel, where you're kind of deciding between different, two different fields and maybe you have a path here and a path there, but um, I'd recommend suggesting why you want to go into both and then go from there. So Robert asked a really good question, which is how do you support yourself financially through medical school? Um, so this depends on, you know, your situation, your family situation. If you worked in the past, you know, if you have a significant other, uh, I'll tell you my story. Um, so I funded my med school through loans all four years. Um, and so when you get a loan uh, through financial aid, you're able to obviously pay for your tuition and then you can choose how much of a loan um, you want to take for your living expenses. So I think for me, my tuition was about $20,000, give or take, um, a year. And then I had the opportunity to take up to $48,000 of loans per year. It's a lot of money. So some years when I knew I'd have more expenses, whether that would be for traveling for residency or moving apartments, things of that sort, I took a little bit more of those loans and I try to back calculate depending on my rent um, and my living expenses, how much I was paying for food and things of that sort. Um, and basically try to keep a budget of saying, you know, maybe I only need $35,000 a year to pay off my tuition and then 15 grand um, to live on. And so that's kind of how I got myself through. Um, I also worked um, some side jobs at like the rec center at the medical school as well as worked as a tutor in my fourth year, that job paid really well. Um, but those kinds of things really helped me financially get through. Um, I also worked a job a year before medical school, so I had a little bit of financial buffer, um, especially when I needed some money here and there for big time purchases. So Michael asked another question. These are all brilliant. I, I actually really like doing this. Um, can an average medical student or average student make it through med school by just working hard? So I guess it depends on what you mean by just making it through. Can you pass and graduate? Absolutely. Um, you know, working hard is probably like 90% of it, 10% of it is some form of a retention, and maybe 1% if you're trying to get to 101 is just some natural talent. 
um, and things going your way. Um, but yeah, working hard can definitely just get you to medical school. Um, you know, hopefully through the process of working hard, you're able to retain more information, um, become better at your clinical rotations and get the grades and the board scores. Um, so can you graduate medical school by working hard? Absolutely. Now, if you want to be at the top of your class, it's going to require you to do a little bit more than just working hard, but also be in the working smart mode. You know, that includes trying to become a high performer by spending less time um, by getting more done. That, that's a whole different video on how to be more productive, how to be more efficient, how to produce more with less time. But can an average student get through by just like putting in the hard work? Yeah, I absolutely think so. You know, I would say a majority of them are an example of it. Ooh, I like this question by David. How do I deal with the gunners in med school? So if you are unfamiliar with the term, which most of you guys probably know, gunners are people in med school. The extreme version is somebody who will go out of their way to make other people look bad and make themselves look amazing because they have really high hopes and goals and aspirations and you know they're willing to step over people to you know get that. Um, and there's going to be gunners in every medical school class. So if you feel like an institution has more gunners than others, I don't, I don't actually believe that. You know, my institution had gunners. Other institutions that are supposed to be a lot more friendly and nice also had their examples. But there are also people who aren't the extreme situation, but people who are always stressed out and let everyone know, um, or people on the opposite end that are doing really well, but also let everyone know. These are two individuals you don't like to spend time with in medical school, and so usually my strategy is limit my time that I spend with them. Um, try not to have them in your social circle, and if they are so for some reason in your social circle because you have mutual friends, then I would just say limit your time with them as much as possible and make sure that you don't go into gunner mode and being stressed out by them. So if they're being stressed out, try to get away from them. Um, remind yourself of the priorities you need to have. That's the biggest thing I've learned is I can be around gunners in med school and residency all the time um, just because I really just don't care uh, when people are stressed around me. I just you know, you sympathize with them, you kind of move on, but you don't let that affect you. That's the biggest thing. Which is harder, med school or residency? Um, definitely residency. Uh, med school is something that has a very nice structure. There are days where you may not have to go to school because things can be watched online. Um, and I miss those days. Um, you know, obviously trying to read a textbook and studying for exams, there's like things that you, like, I'm not missing that, absolutely. Um, the residency is tough. You know, the hours are consistently long, especially on the rotations for things like ICU, internal medicine, surgery is a big one. I feel for my surgery colleagues. Um, so there's different challenges. Um, but I would say that if you require something that's hard, that intermittently gives you a break, med school gives you enough of those. The residency is kind of just like continues to go on until you finish your training. Um, so definitely a residency. So those were some good questions. I think that it's a good time to go ahead and move to reddit.com and see if we can answer the last few before we close off this video. So this is an interesting post that I see already that says somebody thought that med school would be a walk in the park, which I'm already intrigued by. So this is a good question. This actually comes from a med student in the UK um, who finished med school and their question is, you know, when they compare UK med schools to the US med schools, they realize that we here in the US are just definitely more stressed out, um, overworked. Um, they said that they were able to work part-time, see their friends, friends and families. Um, so that's, that's an interesting perspective. Um, I'm honestly not too sure. Uh, I think part of it is that we have a very kind of in finish line goal focus here in the States where it's always, especially in pre-med and medical school environment where people are always trying to get to the finish line um, and try to hope they can just work their butts off in the hopes that they're gonna have some different kind of results. Um, Honestly, you can have the process that I did when I was doing medical school, which is still make time for your priorities. I always went home every other week um, to see my family and now my, my now wife. Um, when I was in the first couple of years of med school, I made sure I started a new side project because I was interested in doing that. Um, so I don't know if we teach to a higher standard, which is part of the question. I think it's just people have a little bit of higher expectations just because of pressure getting into institutions. And usually the people that are going into medicine just have a different work ethic and sometimes it's not always for the best um, and so I don't know uh, my UK colleagues um, comment down below what do you think the difference is all right and so we'll do one more question this one is can I get into medical school without research experience I get this question a lot from my international um, readers and subscribers um, but even for people who live in the states you know if you want to go to a specific med school and this person has done zero research experience but they volunteered in the lab so they have some um, they have a really good GPA at 3.9 um, they really want to see if they can you know get into med school without it i think absolutely you know, the answer um, really depends on the institution that you're applying to if you're applying to an institution that really prefers to have research and you can tell by just the kind of institution it is 
questions they may ask on their secondary application. You know, if an institution has an essay about research, you can assume that they may want to know if you're interested in that may be a priority. If they want to ask more about community service and public health, that may be a more of a priority for them. So um, just make sure you kind of ask yourself what um, a different program is focusing on and they'll kind of tell you um, what they are prioritizing. But that guys is a brief session of me serving as medical consultant on Quora and reddit.com. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section down below. If you did enjoy this episode and this video, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't hit the notification bell as well, because we're putting out videos like this twice a week just for people like you. Um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the frequency of content we've been putting out. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below, actually in the description, you'll find a survey that will indicate and give you the opportunity to tell me what subjects and topics you want me to make a video about in the future. Um, and it's completely anonymous, so go ahead and put out all your suggestions and I'll be happy to make a video just for you. Uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully it's been a little help to you on your journey. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this style of content. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.